Welcome to this week's live ASX Strategy session. Great to have you with me. Lots of um, lots of stuff to talk about, isn't there today? We've got the, uh, the the stock markets pulling back, some volatility in the commodities, so quite a bit going on. Uh, also, got a couple of stocks I want to have a look at, which are which are of, of a bit of interest. Of course, so everything today is general commentary only. It doesn't take your personal situation into account. Gone through that, I think we should just jump straight into our charts. So kicking off with the ASX 200. And well, this has been a really interesting week, what we've seen over the last, last few days. Uh, last week, we're talking about two scenarios. One of those scenarios was, well, the most bullish of those scenarios was that the ASX 200 was gearing up for a, for a series of new all-time highs. And the other was that prices were going to stall up near the, um, the March high and then start, start pulling back within the range. And my favourite view, and this is, as you know, been my favourite view for, for a while now, was that prices move within a range, or in this case, we're going to come back within the range. And the thinking's very much been along the lines of that a longer period of consolidation was required to just to try and balance out this, this five months of, of rally that we had off those October lows. And I think the last couple of days with the market coming back, I think it now, I think it just shifts the odds in favor of that consolidation scenario. I think the question here is, do prices pull back towards, uh, back towards the, the April low, or do we see a consolidation develop it at higher levels, potentially? And then from there, create a platform that sets up the, the, next, the next rally from. I think that a key piece to that answer is what the ASX 200 does just at these current levels. So we've got the pullback. So last week, we put in this support level at 7,730. That's where we've, we've currently come back to. And that picks up, it picks up this structural support. So that takes in like a low point from, from April, takes in a high point, a low point. So there's a bit of, bit of technical work which has been done through there. So it's come back to that. And that also coincides with the, the 50 day moving average. So the most bullish scenario from this setup would be, let me, I'll just sketch this in as, as, we, as I speak. So the most bullish scenario would be that the support holds and the market, you get some sort of a sideways compression, maybe maybe over a few weeks. And then from there, that sets the platform for then another 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 push higher. That's one of the scenarios we could we could see unfold. Um, and that's the that's that would be I think for me that would be the, the best case scenario. Um, another possibility, of course, is that. Over the next next few days, the next week, we see the ASX 200 just break through this, this support. And if that were to happen, well, that would probably then open the way for a retest of the 100-day the moving average, or below that, we have the, um, the April low. And, uh, and if that were to happen, well, that would, I think that would probably mean several more months of consolidation before we could then look at the, the possibility of a of another another leg higher. I think I think both scenarios are positive. I think that it, either way, I think we can see higher levels later in the year. It's just like it's a consolidation, as I've said in the past. Consolidations are messy; they they're hard to navigate. So it's just about having that that that, that strategy that can help help see you through them. Um, what I what I like about the and and look what I like about this this current price action is that we have some really clear levels to watch. So the immediate level is 7,730, which is where the market market currently currently is. Uh, but the, the big ones to keep an eye on are the, the March high and the, um, and the April low. So we have two really defined reference points to, to firm up this range. And I think it's now a matter of this being a waiting game. It's a waiting game until one of these breaks, preferably on the top side. Preferably the top side is the, the way we break out of this range. I think that's what we what we see. But of course, 
it's it's a case of managing what we get, not um, waiting for what we want. So I still hold the view that the overall trend from this October low is up, you know, just compressing this price action, big rally, big consolidation. I think this is the start of a new overall upward phase. Um, nothing here suggesting otherwise at, at this stage. So far, dips are being bought when the market falls back. Every time the market's fallen back, the dips are being supported. So that's a, that's positive. That's that classic bullish price action that we that we look for, buying of dips. And we want to see that accumulation on, on dips continuing. I think the strategy here is, I think it's straightforward. Every stock should have a stop loss because we never know. We never know whether the market will continue up and we never know which stocks, if the market does continue up, we never know which stocks will continue up. So a stop loss, I think, for, for everything is, is a really important thing to, to have. And if buying a stock and it's not performing, I think it's really important to have that, have that exit strategy. All too often, like all too often, I hear of people buying a stock that starts to fall and then rather than, than taking a, a relatively small loss and, and moving on and, uh, and, and protecting their capital, they keep holding. And I, one of the biggest reasons I hear of people say, look, I kept holding because I thought that as soon as I sold, it would rebound. So I didn't want to sell because I didn't want to miss the rebound. So I kept holding. Um, and the problem is it's all well and good if the market comes back, but what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't come back? What if it keeps falling? This is why we've got these exit strategies that helps us avoid a situation where, where a small issue becomes a big issue. And I'll show you an example. I was, I was, on, I was talking on Self Wealth, on their Self Wealth Live program on, when was it, on Tuesday? And one of the viewers came in the comments. He said, look, what, what do you think of the prospects for um, MHG, which is Michael Hill Jeweler? And I had a look at the chart. This is a chart for Michael Hill Jeweler. So I can only assume this person's got a stake in Michael Hill. And look at this. It's been below these declining moving averages for, for well over a year. So for me, there's just no, this is why I think we've got to have a stop loss buy a new position. And this was actually a, a motion trader signal. It's been a motion trader signal several times. First, first um, set of signals was back back down here in 2020, moving averages crossed. We've got a great trend here, let the profit run. Um, eventual exit was, was somewhere back down here about, what's that, a, a year and a half later or, or thereabouts. So, so a nice, nice trend with an exit point. The next trade wasn't so successful. We got a signal here, moving averages across, looked like it was breaking higher again, but this time it stored and came back. But the stop loss cut the position and protected the capital, moved on to something else. Now, without that stop loss, without that exit strategy, it would have been easy, I think, for a lot of people just to hold and hope and see what happens. And you can see the result of doing that, a disaster. So I think have those, have those exit points. And... Um, and, uh, and, and don't let those small losses get out of control. I think another, another part of, of the way to approach the current market, another big part of my strategy is using those wide trailing stops. I like to talk about these all the time because I think it's such an important concept to, to take on board and uh, really ingrain. And it's about, this is all about giving winning trades, giving them plenty of room to move. And if an ASX 200 stock continues to, if the ASX 200 continues to consolidate, so if um, going back to our ASX 200 chart, if we continue to see the market track track sideways for, for several months, well, those wide stops, if you've got a wide trailing stops, it can potentially help you see off that consolidation and also hold on to your best stocks. And this is why I use this, the wide trailing stocks. I want to hold on to my best stock and or my best stocks. And giving you a quick example, like this, this stock here, it's a motion trader stock. It's one of my stocks in my own portfolio, hit a new all time high yesterday, despite this pullback we're getting in the markets, hitting new all time highs. 
I don't want to be cashing this stock out because maybe there's going to be more consolidation in the market because it's running. Why do I want to want to cap my upside potential on a stock like this? It's been running for a while. Uh, my entry point is, is back down here in February 23. The motion trader signal is back down here in November 22. Um, that wide trailing stop, it keeps you in. So my, my stop is typically below the 100-day moving average. That's the, that lower line, the 50-day, the 100-day. And my calculated trailing stop, the same one I use for motion trader, it, it typically comes in below the 100-day moving average. The 100 days are a pretty good proxy for a trailing stop but it doesn't do as good a job as, as sitting through consolidations. Um, this one, this stock here, this has had several double-digit consolidations since the, since the entry point, but those wide stops can help you see them off. That's why I use them, and I think that's a good strategy for the current environment that, that we're in. And uh, the stops, trailing stops, they don't get me out at the high, but they keep me in these big trends for a long time. And, and uh, if this turns to be the turn, if the ASX, if it turns out to be the early stages of a bigger decline, well then of course I've still got an exit strategy that protects most of my capital. Now, I'm, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Uh, please leave us your comment. Just thanks to the video. Helps a lot when you when you do these things to YouTube will go off and show other people. And it also lets me know that I'm telling you something which is useful. So please do that. Um, I enjoy reading all the comments as well. And uh, now I'm going to be one of the small lords, the commodities, a um, couple of stocks I want to show you, which I think are really worth having a close, close look at, keeping an eye on. But, of course, that wraps up the free section. If you're not a strategy session member, there's a link below. Come in. The stocks we spoke about last week were interesting. More ones this week. Come in. doesn't cost very much. And, and, and hopefully you get some, some, some really good insights, which you may not get elsewhere. Okay. With all that said, let's go over and have a look at the small ordinary.